Okay, here we have multiple examples that ask us to take the derivative of an integral. So for part a, for instance, we have the derivative d by dx of the integral from one to x of e to the t squared dt. Now this is important. Anytime you see a derivative of an integral, you need to associate that with using the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. What's dangerous is that people don't realize that and then try to evaluate the integral well, I can tell you right now, this is an integral that doesn't even have an analytical solution. e to the t squared is something you have to use, something called a series, an infinite series, to evaluate. And even then, it's not a profoundly satisfying result the way we get if we just integrated something like x squared. Right? It's a very, very hard thing to integrate. And so you certainly wouldn't want to spend precious exam time working on such an integral that you can't even do, that no one can do. So what does the fundamental theorem of calculus part one say? Okay, well, it says a lot, but I'm gonna to cut to the chase down here where it tells us that the derivative of the integral of f of t is simply f of x. Now, some important things here. So I'll say note single variable, right? If it's, not, if it's something like x squared or three x plus one, we can still do it, we just have to apply the chain rule. Okay, back to our example. Okay, so we have the integral from one to x, so this is our a down here, and it happens to be 1, so that's fine. e to the t squared. So what this tells us is take our same function back, but we put x in it. So this is simply e to the x squared, and we're done. No plus c, nothing like that. It is as simple as replacing the variable with x. In this case. Now imagine how you would have felt if you wasted 20 minutes on an exam trying to evaluate this integral. I've seen people do it, so do not fall for that. If you see the derivative in an integral, straight to FCC1. Let's try part B. We have d by dx of the integral from x to 0 of dp over p squared plus 1. Well, does it matter that this is a dp instead of a dt? No, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that this variable in here is different from whatever variable we have going on out here. Otherwise, it gets very confusing very fast. Now again, we have a derivative with an integral, so we don't try to integrate this thing, although we could integrate this if we wanted to. But instead, think of the derivative and the integral as undoing each other. We just have to get it in this proper form of d by dx from a to x. Well, in this one, our limits of integration are switched. But remember, we can use one of our properties of integrals to switch those limits of integration by making the whole integral negative. So this gives well, I'll just bring that negative all the way outside, negative d by dx, integral from now 0 to x, see how we switch those limits of integration, and the inside stays the same, dp over p squared plus 1. Now we let the theorem work its magic. It simply tells us that it's the same function, but now the variable is an x instead of a t. What's happening behind the scenes is this thing integrates and then gets another derivative, but we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so our final result would have an x in it. Okay, so this becomes 1 over x squared plus 1. Now part c is a little different. We have the derivative with respect to x of the integral from 0 to x squared of dt over t squared plus 4. So I see a derivative right next to an integral, so I'm already thinking I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1, but we need to alter things a little bit here. The fundamental theorem of calculus part one is given for x, but here we have x squared. So what we're gonna do is use the chain rule on this. So we call that the chain rule of, for instance, f of u prime would be the outside f prime of u times the derivative of the inside, u prime. So how would this apply to our area function? Well, area of something like x squared, for instance. Okay, we're priming this whole thing, taking the derivative of it. Well, it's a prime of x squared, right? That's all fine and good. And then times the derivative of the inside, 2x. So simply the chain rule here. All right, so we hit this with the fundamental theorem of calculus that basically says that we have the same inside remaining except for now instead of t, we have not x, but x squared, right? Because that's what's up here in this limit of integration. So we now have one over x squared squared plus four times the derivative of the inside there, that was two x. Okay, so this first term here is our a 
prime of x squared. And our second term here is the derivative of the inside, x squared prime, which of course gives 2x. Okay, clean that up a little bit and call it a day. Let's see, how about 2x over x to the fourth plus 4? No plus c or anything like that. On to part d. Why don't you try this one yourself? We have d by dx of the integral y cubed to 10 of square root of t to the 6 plus 1 dt. Please don't try to evaluate this integral. Use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 and a little bit of finesse to evaluate this thing. Pause the video, work through it on your own, and let's see what you get. Okay, well, I want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 on this, but I need my variable to be up here. So I am going to make the whole thing negative. I'll bring that derivative, that negative all the way out to the front of the derivative and change my limits of integration. That is a property of integrals. So now we have 10 to y cubed of the square root of t to the sixth, uh, make that t to the sixth plus one dt. Note that I'm not trying to integrate this. Now I hit it with my fundamental theorem of calculus. But note that we have a y cubed up here instead of a single variable y. So we're going to need to use the chain rule. No problem, we can do that. So we simply use the fundamental theorem here. So this is negative square root of, and instead of t, we have y cubed. So y cubed to the sixth plus one, and now times the derivative of the inside. Well, the, we're looking at y cubed. The derivative of that is three y squared. That is simply the chain rule. Well, if we clean this up a little bit, we get negative three y squared times the square root of how about y to the 18th plus 1. On to part e, we have d by dx of the integral from negative x to x of the square root of 1 plus t squared, dt. Well, there's a trick to this. First off, I know I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus part 1 because I have d by dx and then an integral. So this, this derivative is essentially going to undo the integral as long as we can get it into the right form. And here's what you do. The key is to pick any number between negative x and x, and actually it doesn't even have to be between them. It can just be any number. Let's choose zero. Zero is always kind of the simplest, but it would work with any constant. So choosing zero, look what we can do. Let's clear out some room here. Okay, so we have, this can be written as, and this is a property of integrals, I'm still going to have my derivative, parentheses. Let's write this as the integral from negative x to 0, square root of 1 plus t squared, dt, plus the integral from 0 to x of the square root of 1 plus t squared, t squared dt. And now we're looking more like integrals that we can use the fundamental theorem on. We need to fix this first one up a little bit, so let's just make this whole thing negative, and I'm going to swap these two limits of integration. So we now have 0 to negative x, but at least we're closer, right? We need the constant down here and some variable up here in the top. Now we're going to have to use a chain rule on that because it's negative x instead of x, but that's okay. Okay, well we can think of this derivative as distributing through to each of these integrals. I'm just going to move this negative here out to the front of the derivative. So we'll just start with a negative. Then we have the derivative of this thing. Well, it's the square root of 1 plus negative x squared times the derivative of the so-called inside. By that, I mean the derivative of this term here. Well, the derivative of negative x is negative 1 times negative 1 plus, okay, the second integral is set up really nicely for the fundamental theorem of calculus. We have 0 to x, so we just replace the t with an x, square root of 1 plus x squared. Well, we can simplify this a little more. We have a negative and a negative. That turns that whole thing positive. And negative x squared, of course, just becomes x squared. So these are actually the same thing. Adding them together gives 2 times the square root of 1 plus x squared. That's a nice result.